In 2017, the city of Las Vegas was preparing for the arrival of an alien species. Now, the surrounding desert landscape is no stranger to alien encounters in the past. And the streets of Las Vegas itself have been known to have a few peculiar, unique characters roaming the streets every day. But this was a new kind of alien creature. It was the city's first fully autonomous shuttle operating on public roads. And for a city that prides itself on firsts and outside of the box thinking, the whole town was excited. Now, the um, interesting thing about this was that this was a bespoke shuttle, a custom and rare shuttle. Yet the city streets of Las Vegas are very crowded. And um, Las Vegas is sometimes known as a place to let your hair down. Sometimes alcohol and various hallucinogenic properties are involved. <laughs> so given the thought of a vehicle that could safely navigate people from point A to point B around town, despite levels of intoxication, everyone was excited. And they welcomed the alien invasion. But what happens when the aliens seemingly partake in the spirits themselves? Well, on day one, within one hour of the launch, the shuttle collided with a truck. It didn't even make it down the block. Were these aliens more foe than friends, some thought? What's more is this, as I mentioned, is a bespoke shuttle, a custom rare breed of vehicle imported from afar, not designed to operate on public roads, not designed for U.S. crashworthiness standards, and it even requires a special legal loophole to get it into the country. Now, the Gartner hype cycle for bespoke shuttles is a steep roller coaster curve. The period between the peak of inflated expectations and the trial of disillusionment can be tight. In the aforementioned case, this was one hour. That's a steep slope. In reality, the path to safe and reliable productivity for these vehicles is much further out there. <clears throat> now, I've been in the field for 20 years and I've experienced the Gartner hype cycle up close, front and personal um, for autonomous vehicles and robots over the years. And in 2003, I had an idea to create a software platform and a kit that would make making robots easier. And in 2005, DARPA, arm of the Pentagon, held out a multi-million dollar prize for someone who could build a completely driverless vehicle that could navigate across the Mojave Desert from Los Angeles to Las Vegas to claim the prize. Looking to blend in with the alien culture, I built a silver egg-shaped shuttle and advanced to the finals. This was my own personal peak of inflated expectations. I was so happy to be there until our vehicle kissed a wall with embarrassing, awkward enthusiasm, I should add, due to a mysterious stuck throttle failure. I entered my own trial of disillusionment with an adrenaline-fueled midnight engine repair and 36 hours of sleeplessness to try to get back into the competition. And the cherry on top? On the trip back home from California to Virginia, our RV with robot car in tow got stuck and wedged on the Hoover Dam for 12 hours. Thank you. Thank you for feeling my pain. <laughs> well, those were the early days of robot experiments. Fast forward through 20 years of engineering, advanced development, safety engineering, the standardization of a kit for vehicles, and I've clawed my way back to the plateau of productivity using safety certified vehicle platforms in bounded geofence zones of operation where we can characterize the safety of operations. Now, I'm going to make a statement, and I'm going to offer no proof whatsoever, but I'm going to make it anyway, and that's that making autonomous vehicles, building these vehicles, is more difficult than brain surgery and more complicated than rocket science. That's it. That's all I'm going to say. 
Okay, I'll explain a little bit. We're actually building a brain instead of operating on one, and we're building it to control these virtual arms and legs that control a vehicle to navigate a crowded ground-based terrain, not open space with uh, maybe a few moon rocks that could hit a, hit a rocket ship, but an unstructured, dynamic environment loaded with people and cars and dogs and deer and rain and snow and buildings and bridges and lakes and mud and everything you can possibly imagine and some things that you might not even imagine until you get to a town as unique as Las Vegas. So how do we accelerate our path to productive salvation for autonomous vehicles? The fact is that there are a massive number of scenarios to handle, edge cases to handle for these vehicles to obtain complete driverlessness. Uh, just for example, think of a utility person waving a car onward while there's a downed power line, or there's a downed power line with no one around to signal the vehicle that it's even there, or that deer, and I know you know which one I'm talking about, <laughs> that's standing on the side of the road looking at you right in your eyes, plotting, planning, maybe even with a little smirk, <laughs> its next move. Now this is all to say that there's just a massive number of environments and conditions and situations that we have to handle to be able to hand the wheel completely over to these driverless vehicles. Well, there's a new alien in town, and it hails from the labs of Silicon Valley. You may have heard of ChatGPT, where you enter a question, and within the span of a few seconds, it's generating an elaborate response more elaborate than anything you and I could generate, or even maybe even a trained expert, and certainly in less time. And if you've ever had a struggle session with ChatGPT, where you asked it maybe who's the next president going to be, or what's the meaning of life, then you've experienced this world transforming technology. But we might be missing out on the best use of the tool. The fact is that GPT AI is excellent at producing code. In fact, that's software that programs machines. And that's because code is well-defined, is well-structured, and there are fewer degrees of freedom in generating a requested output, as opposed to if you ask it a question like, if Donald Trump and Joe Biden got married, what would Vladimir Putin wear to the wedding? <laughs> the fact is, that this technology is accelerating so fast, and even currently right now, it can produce code 10x, 100x faster than even a seasoned programmer. So if you ask a GPT AI engine, generate me a maneuver for parallel parking a car, or look at some camera Im image data and perceive in that a human being or a pedestrian crossing a crosswalk, then we're leveraging the tool in one way that lends itself to productive use. And with the power of a GPT AI engine combined with human co-piloting and a well-structured library of code to complement it, we can achieve 10x, 100x capabilities, productivity increases in developing autonomous vehicles today. And given the accelerative nature of GPT AI technology, 10x, 100x today in a few years is going to be 100x, 1,000x, and a few years after, 1,000x, 10,000x, as is the nature of exponential growth associated with these types of technological innovations. So the world's hardest problem has thus become solvable. And in fact, it's become solvable at an accelerated pace. In fact, we achieve hyper-productivity far exceeding our expectations. And while the promise of autonomous vehicles <clears throat> has been held out there for a while, and we've reached the peak of inflated expectations through various trials and tribulations throughout the years, we now have a recipe for not staying mired in the trowel of disillusionment. <clears throat> In fact, it's already begun by using safety certified vehicles in bounded zones, controlled zones of operation to make autonomy practical now. And in parallel, pulling in the uh, power and leveraging the power of GPT-AI to expand these zones of operation 
and generate the various maneuvers and behaviors and perceptions and verifications that we need to close the gap and provide correct and complete full autonomy. The result, we're rapidly driving towards 100% accident-free mobility for all, everyone, anywhere, anytime, any place, and giving time back to people for productivity and for just living their lives. Now, imagine not just Las Vegas in 10 years, but across every city, every suburb, every rural community, every small town. What do you see? Thank you. <laughs>